you're interested in non-monogamy. <laughs> you've heard about it. You've heard about polyamory. You've listened to this podcast. You heard it on someone else's show. You saw people in public, a guy holding, you know, a woman's hand and the woman holding another woman's hand. Um, we've really enjoyed sometimes when we've been in restaurants together, uh, like Pasha, Lauren, and I, and we'll kind of either have triple kiss or he'll kiss one of us and then kiss the other one like two minutes later. And as much as we're like not rock the boat kind of people, it is fun to see people's reactions. Well, welcome back to Open Late Podcast. I'm your host, Jessica Spandiari, and today is another solo episode. Um, I recently realized how important it is for me to start connecting with all of you more one-on-one -on -one so I can share, in a way, uninterrupted my experiences, my expertise, having almost been non-monogamous for a decade. Um having been non-monogamous for almost a decade, is I think what I meant to say. Um, I've learned a lot along the way, and I've had all different types of experiences. And I think what's most valuable is to start answering the questions that you ask me in your comments, in your DMs, in your reviews. Um, and so I want to take it there. One of the biggest questions that I get all the time is how do I talk to my partner about this? Or how do I talk to the people that I'm dating about non-monogamy? Like it feels super taboo for some, for others it can feel shameful or embarrassing. Um, and for many, there's a lot of fear, right? If you think about telling a partner, if you've been in a relationship, a monogamous relationship for a long time and you've done things one way, how exactly you're going to burst that bubble? You know, what's the best way to broach the topic with someone? So we're going to dive into that today. But before we do, as mentioned, um, I want to share with you some of my favorite reviews of the show, um, some of the best comments that I've received because they really like, they really light up my life my world. Um, it makes doing this show so exciting for me because I know that you're learning and you're growing alongside me. And I just think it's really sweet. So I wanted to highlight some of you. The first one is just simply like a quote for life. If you're in involved in non-monogamy or polyamory, this is something that most of us would agree. Um, and it's what we hope the world can see from this non-traditional style of relationship. Um, but this person shared that open relationships are the exact opposite of cheating. It's trust, respect, and care, which I couldn't agree more. And I'm super grateful that you shared that sentiment. Um, this review, which was on Apple Podcasts from Miggy Mill, um, and I know who that is. It's an Instagram friend of mine and a listener of the show. I was going to say longtime listener of the show. I mean, we've only been around a year, but... I think he's been listening the whole time. Um, he said, I recommend this podcast to literally anyone and everyone, regardless of the type of relationship they may seek out. Exposure to different ways of thinking and living is literally healing because it provides freedom, mental and spiritual. The guests are enticing and so informative. I've learned a lot and journaled so much after listening to some of these episodes. Do yourself a favor and give it a listen. Yeah. What I love about that is he highlighted the fact that he's taking what we share in the podcast and using it to journal and reflect on his own life and places where he can grow. And that's really what I want from the show. I would love for this to almost be like, you know, a practice or like a workbook. I've thought about making an open late workbook. So let me know if you, if that's something you would enjoy or find valuable um, because I want this to work in your life, not just something that you listen to um, and forget about. The next one that I want to share with you is from 907 Nomad. Um, and this is also an Apple review that they shared. I'm so thankful I found this podcast. I have been struggling with what I could only explain to myself as a sexual awakening. It's really so much more than that. 
evolution, and personal growth within a long-term monogamous marriage had me feeling like a failure and that something was wrong with me. I'm thrilled I'm not as taboo as I thought, and so many others know what I'm going through and can explain the ways to me, or the whys to me. The ways, the whys. We're explaining it all, (laughs) but I super appreciate you. Um, I have a lot of listeners that are in long-term monogamous marriages, so... If you are, just know that there is a community full of people like you out there who want to explore this, you know, non-traditional way of relating because for many of us, we want to remain married to the person that we chose, right? I mean, Pasha and I have been married eight years. He is the human that I'd love to spend the rest of my life with and build my family with. And at the same time, we want to allow each other to grow and to explore and to expand and to really get the most out of life and get the most out of who we're meant to be. And we decided a long time ago that we weren't going to settle for less than that. And we also realized that we grow and we expand more when we're in relationship with other people. So kind of felt like a no-brainer for us. The last one I'm going to share today is from Jory A. And she wrote, a lot of people are talking about this topic these days, but this podcast stands out from the rest. Jessica is relatable, honest, and inspiring. Thank you. She is a way of helping you explore yourself without being too challenging or judgmental. Just opening ideas and questions and conversations that maybe you didn't know how to get to on your own. The result is a feeling of expansion, permission, and above all, love. And I appreciate that reflection so, so much because I've always wanted this space to be a non-judgmental space, right? This is my work. I'm putting my intimate life on display and I want people to feel safe. Um, I have a lot of listeners that are still in monogamous relationships and that have no intention of opening up or exploring their sexuality beyond, um, you know, being monogamous or being heterosexual, um, but they just want to know what's happening out there or they're interested or, you know, it's something that a friend of theirs is interested in or practicing and they want to learn more about it. So I'm always down to give tips and tools and um, share insights on how I keep my relationship with Pasha really spicy and intimate and um, generating energy inside of that container as well. Because as much as we're open, we spend the majority of our time together and we're planning to be, you know, married forever and start a family. So my hope is that everyone can learn from the show, no matter what stage in your life, no matter what style of relationship you are in or practicing. um, I really want it to be a solid community of many different types of people with diversity and complexity and one where we can really all share ideas. So with that being said, please leave a review if you haven't yet and let me know what you want to hear more of because these solo episodes are really going to be based on the questions that you're asking. Um, And if you do it on Apple, Uh, iTunes, Spotify. I'm going to see it. Um, So I appreciate you all. And now let's get into this episode. So you're interested in (laughs) non-monogamy. You've heard about it. You've heard about polyamory. You've listened to this podcast. You heard it on someone else's show. You saw people in public, a guy holding, you know, a woman's hand and the woman holding another woman's hand. Um, We've really enjoyed sometimes when we've been in restaurants together, uh, like Pasha, Lauren, and I, and we'll kind of either have a triple kiss or he'll kiss one of us and then kiss the other one like two minutes later. Just kind of, you know, seeing seeing what people will react to is really interesting. Um, And as much as we're like not rock the boat kind of people, it is fun to see people's reactions. And we live in LA, so it's not that (laughs) abnormal here. Um, But I imagine if we lived in, you know, Wyoming or something, who knows, um, it might be, it might be a spectacle. And so for those of you listening who are interested in opening up and you're not even sure how to talk to your partner about this because you've never seen it, 
Um, you know, your partner's never seen it in society and media and entertainment. Um, how do you broach that topic? So I would love to start by saying I'm going to speak from the perspective that you're coupled for a lot of this because that's my experience. The only experience that I have in non-monogamy uh, was born out of an accidental threesome with my husband um, before we were married, about six months before we were married. And if you want more about that experience, head all the way back to episode one because I recap the entire thing in our very first episode. But I'm just sharing that to let you know that neither of us had any experience with non-monogamy and we never really spoke about it explicitly before it started happening in our lives. Um, but I have the perspective of a woman who was in a pretty mononormative relationship before that threesome. And I only had monogamous relationships before then. I mean, I had been cheated on before, um, but yeah, there was no polyamory in earlier Jessica times. So how do you broach the topic? And I'll share um, how the, the best ways that I think to do it while you're dating, if you're uncoupled um, or potential partners, or even if you want to bring it up on a first date, but just know that that's never been my experience. So I don't have a lot of learning from my own personal life to share, but I can sort of give you the advice or the coaching that I think would be helpful. So we'll start there. The best way to start is to do an internal audit of your own relationship. Why do you want to be open? What is it that's not satisfied within you? What itch, what desires need to be scratched, right? So I want you to grab a notebook and a pen if you can because this one is going to be like a workbook. I'm going to share a lot of questions and reflections and I would love for you to put them into action in your life. It's the only way that it's actually going to support you. So do an internal audit of your relationship. What desires are going unsatisfied? What itch needs to be scratched, right? Why do you even want to entertain the idea of non-monogamy? Is it non-monogamy or is it polyamory that you're truly interested in? One is pretty um, sexually based a lot of times, and I'm, I'm generalizing here, and polyamory is where the emotion starts to get involved. Um, and really ask yourself those kinds of questions. And then also ask yourself, what needs do I have that aren't being met? And what's the flip side of that? What needs do I have that my partner does meet consistently? Ask yourself. Does my partner have needs that I'm currently not meeting? You know, if you've been in a long-term monogamous relationship and your sex life has sort of dwindled and that's the area that you're like, I really need this itch scratched, you know, what is it that's been lost? Is it the connection, intimacy? Is it the novelty, the play, the fun? Um, and really do that inventory. Take stock of what you feel like is missing. Yeah. And is there room to reignite that passion, that chemistry, that connection? Do you miss it with your partner or do you just want to have that need met somewhere else? Because this is a big distinction here. A lot of people want that need met from their partner. And I see this a lot of times where in a partnership, people will turn to non monogamy. Um, from a place of wanting that need met from their partner and not being able to. So a lot of times in that case, the non-monogamy or the, the practice of it, the behavior of opening up can be born from a place of resentment. And that's not a great place to start. So I would get really clear first for yourself, right? And then we're going to take this work to our partner and we're going to ask these types of questions uh, once we've broached the topic, right? So I would say once you're really clear on that, that's a much better time to bring this information to your partner. Now, I also want to share with you, it's completely normal 
to want to be with other people, whether that be romantically, intimately, sexually, um, familially, just for fun, right? We're so multidimensional as humans and we used to live in villages and in tribes and in community. And we had tons of relationships where there weren't so many boundaries. Uh, We weren't isolated the way that we are today in these single family homes and a nuclear family. Um, Monogamy wasn't even the norm like hundreds of years ago. So it's literally in our DNA and we're hardwired, right, to appreciate beauty, to be turned on by things that excite us, right, by other people's chemistry When it mixes with ours, we have a chemical reaction to things called pheromones. And these things are unavoidable. And for many of us, they're undeniable. Now, I'm not saying that everyone should go act on it, right, outside of an agreement or break someone's trust. But what I'm calling into focus is that these things are there. So just because you marry someone, sign a marriage certificate, or commit to being monogamous, right, does not mean that those internal and physiological um, automatic responses don't still happen, right? So I could be married for 15 years, and if I see a hot guy walk down the street, I'm still going to notice that, and it might be a turn-on for me. It doesn't mean that I have to act on it, but what I'm pointing out is just because I committed to this man doesn't mean that I'm not going to get turned on by that beauty. And so expecting that of our partner is just wild. And I find that the more we deny those parts of ourselves without being able to share it and be in a space where we can say, oh, I think that guy's hot. Do you think that guy's hot or that girl's hot or whoever? Um, So I'm pointing this out just so that you know that this is completely normal and it's how we're all wired. And so when you're thinking about talking to your partner about this, just know that there's nothing out of the ordinary about these turn-ons, about these desires. I mean, we literally can't turn them off. And expecting our body to do that is going against nature. And, you know, like I said, I'm not saying act on it, but the fact that you have it know that your partner likely has it too. Now, I'm not speaking for everyone on the planet. There are certainly people who are asexual, um, who maybe have a chemical imbalance where their libido is much lower. And of course, in those cases, we can't really speak to that. But I'm sharing this so that we all feel like, okay, wow, I'm not crazy. I'm not a sexual deviant for that, which is how I felt in my 20s anytime I was in a monogamous relationship. I'm just freaking normal. And I live in a society that expects a lot. They expect me to turn this off like a light switch the moment that I commit to someone. So keep that in mind when you are bringing this up to your partner, that if you're feeling it, your partner's probably feeling it too and felt it. And if you haven't been honest yet about those things with each other, this is a great time to start. Maybe starting there and just saying, I want to be able to be myself and just share these things with you. doesn't mean I'm going to act on it, but I would feel better if you knew because I feel like this is a part of myself that I'm denying and I also don't want to be out of integrity with you. I want you to know what's going on, you know, whether it's just thoughts or whatever. And this is really interesting because this is one of the ways that Pasha and I really started out, which I'll, I'll pick back up later. Um... But there are themes in aging relationships where if people don't grow and allow each other to change, things get really stale. You don't have newness energy anymore. You're not having a chemical reaction that you once did for the first couple of years, right? That honeymoon phase. Um, And even just talking about other people in the bedroom and dirty talk and fantasizing can really reignite that spark between two people. So it's about creating that safety, right? And creating the security and the trust to say, I think this could be spicy for us just to talk about what it would be like before we would ever even act on it. So that's just something to consider. Um, And then, you know, 
it's important to think about when you're bringing this to your partner, what is your intention? Um, as I said earlier, you know, there's a lot of different types of couples, right? There are ones who've completely lost a spark. There are ones who are kind of in the middle and there are ones who still have a spark between the two of them, but also want to create more energy, excitement, um, sexual exploration, right? That can't be done with that partner because that partner doesn't have the parts or the the type of energy, right? That we're craving for that need to be met. Um, so get clear. Do you want to continue to have an intimate and sexual relationship with your partner um, is a good place to start. Not to say that this is all about sex. Many people seek out non-monogamy just for the emotional component. Um, but really understanding what the foundation of your relationship would be. Do we want to remain primary partners and date other people independently? Would we like to find communities that we vibe with or other couples or other singles? Um, do you want to try working with a professional, like a tantric body worker? You know, um, there's so many incredible professional sex workers that can actually take care of you and your partner as a couple. And it's literally what they do, right? Um, I know some of them. And I just think that, you know, a lot of times couples overlook the fact that you can have someone whose entire focus is on creating a beautiful experience for you and your partner. When you do it with another person, it's important to remember that they are another person with their own needs and desires and to take care of them inside the, you know, threesome energy that you're, you're now creating. So start to think about that for yourself and go into the talk with an idea of what you're thinking. Now, this does not have to be set in stone because if you are in partnership, this should be a collaboration, right? So <laughs> the worst thing to do is go in and be like, I've decided this, this is where I am. Um, but I do think it's important to start asking yourself these questions because it will lead to a more fruitful conversation and you'll get more out of it. And I think your partner will as well because you're just getting clarity by asking yourself these things. One of the best things to do once you get clarity is bring that information to your partner. Is this born out of wanting to do this with them in partnership because you want to strengthen your relationship? Um, and that can look so many ways, right? Even if there is no sexual chemistry left and it's not something you're interested in reigniting, do you want to continue to co-parent um, build a life together, um, share certain responsibilities um, or businesses. You know, there are a lot of modern day couples who are not divorcing, um, who realize that they actually haven't fallen out of love, that they have just missed this bit of a spark. And a lot of people get that spark reignited when they do start having relationships with other people and they bring that back and it sort of relights a fire that they thought was long gone. Um, but I share this because I think it's important to think about how do we define success in a relationship? You know, um, is it just longevity? Is it that we stayed together no matter what, but you're really unhappy? <laughs> or is it the ability to redefine who and where you are at all of these stages of your long-term marriage? Um, I know couples that, you know, were not having sex or not really being intimate in the bedroom for years, but were still deeply in love and best friends and that didn't want that to change. And so they were able to create what worked for them. And so the other thing is, what if you're like, I want that spark back with you. And I think that this could reignite it. Maybe it has nothing to do with that partner. Maybe the spark is there, but you're also like, I really want to be sexually expressive. I want to have sex more than you're able to, right? Maybe you're having great sex. You know, this was like my case. Pasha and I started super early on, like I said, in the threesome. That was an accident. Um, but it evolved because he was working a ton. 
we had completely opposite schedules. I mean, I was working a lot too, but I was still figuring out what it was I was doing, right? I was 30. And he was just unavailable to me, like four or five nights a week. And this was at a time in my life where I was having like a sexual like awakening because previous in my 20s, I was very deprived. I had a ton of shame around my sexuality. Um, I had called in cervical cancer that was very aggressive and I had a hysterectomy in my 20s. And so I had a lot of trauma in my body and just like big things like that that I had worked through. And so when I got to 30 and I met this man, And we started having the craziest, most passionate, wildest, incredible sex of my life. Um, We had only been together, I think, less than a year and a half, two years before we started to talk about the idea of other people. And it did just start by bedroom talk because we realized we were both turned on by it Um, and sharing these fantasies and desires and me opening up to the first man ever that I was interested and attracted to women. So for me and for us, it was really born out of not how can we add more to our relationship, but that was going to be a byproduct of us exploring who we were as people and being like sexually liberated for me and really understanding that I wanted to be with women. And so there are many different types of people. And the reason I'm sharing all these, and I'm probably missing so many, is to say where is this born out of for you? Um, And to be able to communicate that to your partner and say, this is where I'm at. I'd love to know where you are about this. You know, and I think for a lot of people, it's going to be maybe a mixture of these. And I would say, you know, checking in with your partner when you're ready to have that conversation and say, this is a topic that really interests me, right? This is the actual talk piece, by the way. This is how you talk to your partner about wanting to be in an open relationship. First, you say, listen, it's not just about wanting to fuck other people. No, just kidding. But remember, it's important to communicate truly your your authentic come from. And I think in many people's case, it's I want to be with you and I want to build a life with you and I don't want us to change. However, I am feeling like there are certain wants, needs, and desires of mine that I really want to have met, that I really want to explore, that I'm thinking that they're different than the desires that you want. But maybe I'm wrong. Do you have areas of of our life, of your life, of your needs, of your wants, your desires that are not being met? In what areas maybe aren't you satisfied? Um, it's important to do a relationship audit together and maybe not even because you're interested in non-monogamy, but just period. Like how many monogamous relationships go 10, 20, 30 years, even five years, even two years without checking in and saying, why are we here? What are we moving towards? Um, you know, how am I showing up as a partner? How are you showing up as a partner? Acknowledging each other, giving each other feedback. It's so important. What's the intention for your relationship? What are your relationship goals? Otherwise, you don't really know what you're moving towards. A practice, the passion I have that we love is every year on our anniversary, we go to dinner and we share feedback for each other. We share what we love that the other person's um, shown up as or accomplished in that last year, you know, our favorite thing about the relationship at that time. And then one thing that we wish the other would work on. And it's beautiful because it's honest and it's present with exactly where we are. And we use that almost as a navigation tool. So, I would say checking in with your partner and saying, I want to make sure that we're both getting the most out of this relationship, out of our lives. How can we do that with each other? If that's your intention, right? To stay, to stay committed. Um, And then, you know, communicating that. I want to grow and evolve together. I want to allow you to change. I want to be able to change and to express myself. And so, 
I'm interested in that and I'm interested in doing it with you in a way that works for both of us. And I think that hands down, this is the best way to kind of broach the topic if it's true for you. Um, If you are uncoupled and you're dating or you're starting to get serious with someone and you haven't shared it yet, this conversation works in the same way. But it can be like, I'm really interested in seeing where this goes with us. I'm very curious. Um, I feel like there is a deep connection here. But just so you know, this is a part of me that I'm also committed to because I think that I will grow the most as a human if I practice this. The bottom line to this is this is not a me thing. This is an us thing. And, you know, also communicating that You're willing to take this as a journey. Many people want to dive headfirst into the deep end. And I find that that's just not smart. It doesn't work. Um, It can create a lot of unnecessary, you know, pain and trauma in the beginning of these types of relationships. So the best thing to do is also let your partner know that you're willing to start with a lot of conversations about it. And let me know how it goes. I would love to hear from you as you all start to open up to each other, be authentically yourselves more and more. And of course, there's so much more to this topic, um, but I wanted this one to be really direct and create clarity and to give you actionable tools, right? And some journaling um, and some homework because the best thing to do when you're dipping your toes into non-monogamy is to go slow and have patience, right? We have the rest of our lives and we have a lot to learn along the way. So with that being said, I hope you have an amazing week. I'm going to be sharing a little bit more on this topic in the next couple of weeks, um, namely how to start once you and your partner sort of agree or you're on the same page. And another episode that we're going to share is how to open up to friends and family um, about this part of your life. But there's one more thing I want to leave you with. It's that the anxiety and fear that so many of us feel about actually telling someone that we feel this way, especially our partner, maybe a very long-term monogamous partner or even a brand new person. Um, You're like, wow, I don't want them to think, you know, I'm a weirdo or, you know, for me in my case, like coming out to people, I didn't want people to think that I was like sexually deviant because I had so much shame around my sexuality. The fear and anxiety about telling people is so much worse than their actual reaction nine times out of 10. And the thing is, we're all sharing energy all the time. If you're feeling like your relationship is missing a little bit of something, that you can be providing for each other, whether that's together or with new partners, I guarantee your partner's feeling it too. So the longer you wait, the more you're going to be in that agonizing purgatory space. So I hope that you feel really empowered after listening to this and go and have that conversation. Um, Non-monogamy is always going to bring up a lot of work. So if you're like, damn, this is this is a lot of homework just to have this conversation. Just know that this is the best work you can be doing, getting clear for yourself, getting clear for the course of your relationship because it pays off in dividends. And if you don't want to do a lot of work on yourself or on your relationship, open relationships might not be for you actually um, because it takes so much of, you know, that internal audit, that relationship audit, emotional excavating, healing old wounds, childhood trauma, you name it, you will be working on it if you choose this lifestyle. And it's not all doom and gloom. I mean, there are also, you know, sex parties and orgies as well. So, you know, both ends of the spectrum. (laughs) All right, you guys. Like I said, don't hesitate to let me know how it is going. And please, please, please take a moment to leave me a great review because I would love to read yours on the show next. Bye.